This is my top five tips for building the perfect epoxy table. We already made all these mistakes, so you don't have to. Tip number one, moisture content. What is moisture content? Moisture content is basically the water that's inside your slab. Now, if you're going to cut the tree down, it's obviously going to be full of moisture. So it needs to dry naturally, or you can use a kiln oven. In our case, we're using a kiln oven, which speeds up the process. This is your most critical part in your project of building the perfect table. What's gonna happen to your table as it gradually dries? If wood dries, it shrinks. If it shrinks, it's going to break off from the epoxy, it's going to warp and this form. So you need to make sure your moisture content is underneath 11%. Just a quick one before we go to tip number two, always make sure to remove your bulk and softwood from your table. This is just going to help you so that you have a very strong bond between your epoxy and your wooden slab. Tip number two, always make sure to build your table slightly bigger lengthwise, widthwise, and heightwise. Heightwise. And heightwise. Oh, <laughs> and heightwise. And the reason for this obviously is to cut your table down to its final size in the later stages of your project. And this step starts at the beginning when you start designing your table. When you start preparing your slab to fit inside your mold, you need to make sure you cut your slab slightly bigger lengthwise and widthwise. And when you're going to start preparing and building your mold for your table, you need to make sure you build it bigger lengthwise and widthwise. And always remember the side panels you put up for your table needs to be slightly higher because when you're going to pour the epoxy that it's not going to leak out tip number three <laughs> tip number three air bubbles the one question we get so much from all the people that's watching our videos is how do we deal with air bubbles very easy this section i'm going to divide into four quick tips number one before we start planning and mixing and pouring our table we would put our part a and our part b resin and hardener in the sun for around about two to three hours to heat up the epoxy then we will mix them together then it makes the epoxy more liquidy meaning the air bubbles is going to rise up much quicker number two if it's winter season and you don't have the sun available we've got this massive pot with water in we will heat it up and it's basically the same process you follow number three once you mix your pot a and your pot b in one bucket for around about three to five minutes we would typically wait 15 to 20 minutes and we will come and pop that with our gas flame gun number four is obviously when you're pouring your table you wait around about 10 to 15 or 20 minutes and you come back and you pop your bubbles with your gas flame gun what we would typically do is we are using a deep casting epoxy where we can pour up to around about 100 mil but because the typical tables we build is transparent tables and not a solid color epoxy, what we figured and noticed is that we would typically pour around about 20 mil to 25 mil at a time. It basically gives us more working time with the epoxy and it releases the air bubbles much quicker. Tip number four what your end color is going to look on your project now this is a very easy one once you mix your epoxy in a bucket you just take a transparent cup and you scoop around about the same thickness as what your table is going to be then you're going to see what your table is going to look like at the end because if you're going to look inside the bucket you're going to see the colors are much much darker than what's in your cup Tip number five, using a scorch pad to finish your tables. This is obviously only applicable if you go for a frost smoky finish on your table. If you're gonna go for high gloss, you're obviously going to go through all the polishing stages. Now, frost finish on your tables. We will typically sand up to 400 grit, but if you don't use a scorch pad, you will see a lot of shrill marks on your table. Use a scorch pad to remove all your problems from your life. This is literally a game changer for anyone building epoxy tables. Tip number six. Always make sure that when you're going to cast your next layer of epoxy, that your previous layer you casted is tacky. Tacky is basically to have a better chemical bond between the two layers you just casted. 
So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you support us by liking this video, subscribing, and hitting the notification button so you don't miss out on any future content we're posting. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week with another super cool project. Cheers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.